Welcome to episode 33 of Fire Sale Franchise. Some huge things happened in episode 32. Namely, Lance Sitton getting injured, out for two more weeks, which isn't that long. So two games with Logan Tammy. Can Logan Tammy in those two games win himself a starting spot? I highly doubt it, but it could be possible. We don't know how well he's going to play. It was a bit of a disaster when he came in to fill in for Sitton once he got injured, but we can't blame him entirely for that. It was already going pretty badly to begin with. Now, over the last two weeks, we've had barely any running game. Now, both Marshall and Cowan have been better in the past, but I'm going to bring in Cowan a lot more. Previously, he was just in for heavy packages. I'm going to bring him in on a lot more plays now. Also, we're playing the Packers at the Packers. That's not going to be an easy game whatsoever we're going to look at their roster i'm going to make the changes here so cowan plays more often and then we'll get into the game now if you remember it was in the playoffs last year where we had an incredible comeback effort against the packers and let's see how they've changed since then they got a rookie center will curran 76 overall we got quinton copels at left end and a rookie punter called zach novak but that's it only a few changes so we've made our changes it's going to be a tricky away game but we need to stop this losing skid we're on I don't think we have to be completely worried about our division catching up, but the Falcons are only two games behind. If we continue losing games, they may well catch up to us. Although, if we do lose this game against the Packers, we then get to play the Browns and Buccaneers, so at least we have a way to climb back up there. But obviously, we're not planning to lose this game. We're going to hit them on the ground. We're going to dedicate ourselves to the ground game, especially with Logan Tammy coming in. And I think we can get something moving today, or at least I hope so. So this is the first play of the game. The Packers have the ball to start the game, and Kevin Pierre-Lewis comes in on a bit of a delayed blitz, and he gets Aaron Rodgers there. So first play of the game is a sack for our defense. Let's hope they can keep this pressure up. Third and 11 for Rodgers, he gets it out, but it's just a short completion for two yards. So against Rodgers, we get a lot of sacks, and Keith Marshall here tries to get a run going, and nothing there, just a one-yard gain. And then a short pass there would be in a bad situation, but that face mask puts us just in front of the 50-yard line. And then a nice pass out to Sugars puts us well over the 50-yard line, all the way to the 33. And the offense is moving now on its first drive. Tammy again with another completion to Sugars, and now we're inside the 15 on the 12-yard line. And on first and 10, we run with Marshall, and there he finds a decent hole. First time today and first time in a few weeks. And on a second and three, a pitch to the outside. Nobody there. Nobody can match his speed coming to the corner. And that's his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. And then we're up seven to nothing. Third and eight. Rogers looking around, finds his guy Lacey. Lacey makes a man miss and gets the first down. So we had a chance there to stop him, but they get the first down. On first and ten, Lacey running, but he ran straight into a corner blitz there from Ifo Ekpre Lumu. Just happened to be a perfectly called up defensive play by accident mostly. And then Nelson makes one guy miss, makes two guys miss. It's only De Stanley that can catch him, and he does. He catches him at the 13-yard line. And now the Packers have it, first and ten on the 13, and Rodgers is sacked by Jamarcus Vance. Now Rodgers we sack a whole bunch of times usually, and we're doing it again today. And a nice tackle there from Sheryls. So it's third and 16 for the Packers. Rodgers looking around, he's got time, finds a guy short, and then D. Milliner comes in and breaks up that pass. So it's not even a completion, fourth and 16, they had to go for the field goal. So we got the ball now, and now we throw it out to Coleman, who on the outside has a whole bunch of space to run, takes it to the 37 from our 33. And a second and 13, Tammy throws it there to Foster in front of a defender, but he catches it, gets around him, and goes inside the 10-yard line. And a third and goal, we rush with Cowan, and he can find absolutely no space there. Run blocking really has been the problem recently, but not apparently for the Packers, where Lacey gashes us for a big gain on second and three. But then a holding call a couple of plays later gave us a chance to make it second and 20 or third and 12. We go for second and 20. Short completion, but it's a forced fumble there by D. Milliner. Stuck, he couldn't get to it, but Dejun Smith does. He picks it up. There's nobody going to catch him. He easily walks into the end zone for yet another defensive touchdown. We've already had a lot this season, and that just adds another to the long list. Great play from D. Milliner. Heads up play from Dejun Smith. And now on third and 10 for the Packers with the ball back. Dion Jordan sacks his good friend Aaron Rodgers. Dion Jordan, of course, tied the single game. NFL record for sacks against Rodgers and Keith Marshall with a huge hole to the left there he's only got to beat guys for speed and we know he can do that quite easily and he can just go into the end zone that's his fifth rush over 20 yards this season it's his sixth touchdown of the season and when we wanted to get the running game going we really got it going today Eddie Lacy bouncing off two tackles makes another guy miss finally is tackled by Jamarcus Vance that was quite a lot of effort for five yards now Aaron Rodgers on second and 16 rolls out to the right and he runs with it we had problems with Cam Newton when he ran for it Aaron Rodgers doesn't manage to pick up the first down, but puts his team in third and two and passes for a first down completion there. D. Milliner just shoving him out of bounds at the end. Third and nine now for Rodgers looking around. 
just dumps it off to Eddie Lacy, who wasn't covered, and he picks up the first down there. Now it's first and 10, 26 seconds left in this first half, and it's a completion. No, it's not. Derek Milner coming in there at the end. Forcing the incompletion, second and 10, 20 seconds left. Lofts it up right at the one yard line. Couldn't get into the end zone before being tackled. Now first and goal, 16 seconds. Stucky in for the sack and the forced fumble. It's recovered by the Packers, but they could only spike it with one second left. Had to go for the field goal. So we go into the half. 24 to 6 after our defense puts up a stand there right at the end. A pitch on third and one to Marshall. One on one tries to juke the defender, can't get anything, and we have to punt it away. Third and six, though, the Packers did nothing with their possession. And now Tammy, he's not quick, but he manages to pick up this first down on the ground. 67 speed, still manages to pick it up. We saw that in preseason, and he does it again here. Now first and 10, throws it to Coleman, just behind Coleman, but Coleman makes the catch for a first down regardless. And another pitch here to Marshall. This time, nobody in front of him on third and one and takes it all the way inside the 25 yard line to the 23 10 rushes 85 yards at this point third and four play action to foster throw to foster and foster takes it inside the 10 there to the nine yard line second and goal on the nine quick throw to sharp he gets into the end zone to j sharp with the touchdown we know tammy likes throwing to him and he gets in for a touchdown there. And on first and 10, a quick completion to Ty Montgomery by Rodgers. And on third and seven, he's got some time to look around. Throws it to Nelson, but Jameson Nickerson almost had an interception there. He should have caught that. And on fourth and seven, they have to punt it away. But it really was a good punt. Pins us all the way on the two-yard line. So we start with a rush attempt by Cowan, and he gets absolutely nothing. Probably loses half a yard. So we're on third and eight now. We're going to have to pass. Throw out to Coleman. He makes the completion all the way to the 20-yard line. That gives us a whole bunch of breathing room. And on first and ten, another run with Cowan. He runs over some guys, but fumbles right at the end. We haven't seen that a lot. Corey Wong makes the tackle, stops them there. But that was a huge play from the Packers. It is 31-6, to six, but you never know with Aaron Rodgers. And it's a completion there to Nelson. And he's just knocked out of bounds by Derek Milner. Derek Milner has been playing incredibly today. First and goal for the Packers. Quick pass to Richard Rodgers. It's a completion for a touchdown. So the Packers score their first touchdown of the day in the fourth quarter. We have the ball back on third and eight. It was a nice throw by Tammy. Wasn't caught by Malcolm Mitchell, so we turn the ball over again. Second and eight, 31 to 13. And Randall Cobb, a big play there. Darren Stanley took the long way around. Derek Milner finally catches him. And we tackle him inside the 15-yard line at the 12. Second and 10 for the Packers. Completion inside. Stopped at the one-yard line by who else? but Derek Milner. Holding penalty first and 11, first and goal, stopped again on the one yard line. So second and goal on the one yard line. Rogers doesn't have a lot of time and Kevin Pierre-Lewis in for the sack. Stuckey was kind of there on the floor too. Now fourth and goal, they're going for it. Throws it into the end zone and it's incomplete. Well, that could have been another interception from Jameson Nickerson and he probably knows it. And Cowan here, this is the final run of the game. The game was already over at this point. Now that's the kind of game we were looking for. Great from everybody there. Now, Logan Tammy was very good. I mean, just look at the numbers. 88 completion percentage, a touchdown, 127.7 rating. But he didn't throw that much. 169 yards, 15 completions, 17 attempts. Like I said before this game, I wanted to get back to running, and we did that well this week. But Tammy was good. He didn't do anything where I thought, wow, I have to play him over Sitton, even when Sitton comes back. But he also didn't disappoint me in any way. Just nice, good backup. So Nate Cowan had the most carries, um, only got 28 yards. But he was just grinding the game out at the end. Keith Marshall on 11 carries had 85 yards. Didn't really have that many offensive plays this week, to be honest. There was a lot of stopping the Packers. And Keith Marshall, two touchdowns as well. Good comeback game from him. Receiving, Sugars had a good day. Brandon Coleman did all right as well. And Tajay Sharp. Logan Tammy seems to find Tajay Sharp more than anybody else. Christian Stuckey had himself quite the day today. Two sacks. Jamarcus Vance had himself the day today too. Two sacks. Dion Jordan got himself reacquainted with his favorite quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, of course. He is the guy who he tied the all-time sacks in a game record against. A whole bunch of sacks again. Although that line is good statistically, they just don't play very well against us. No interceptions, but Jameson Nixon should have had two today. Two in his hands that just dropped onto the floor. We did, however, have forced fumbles, and we had two of them. Christian Stuckey had one. Dee Milliner had the one that was returned for the touchdown, and it was returned for the touchdown by Dejun Smith, one of the day one players that was there from the very beginning. Now obviously only serves in a backup role really, but he's still got himself a touchdown. Two players have regressed. I think that's the mystery injury bug has got to be because nobody did anything bad today. Apart from Nate Cowan who fumbled once, but surely he's not going to regress for that. Okay, so he had under four yards per carry again, which I think is just stupid. And DJ Foster with this mystery injury bug. All right, so that's also college players scouted for the week and that's us done with the week. 
getting a nice win there but if we know anything about the recent few episodes what's likely to happen now is that we lose and we lose quite badly and you'll see now why that's funny. So this week we play the Browns who actually don't look too bad six and five it'd be very interesting to look at their roster Big injury decision is never a big injury decision. Lance Sitton has been cleared, but that's why we have Logan Tammy. We'll start him. Well, that's a big difference. They've got a guy called Simon Bowen, who they drafted last year, an 89 overall quarterback. Can move a little bit as well, but is extremely accurate. A running back, they have Theo Riddick. And a wide receiver, they have Corey Coleman and two very good second-year players, 83 and 80 overall. At center, they've got Cody Tegart, a second-year player. And a right tackle, Phil Lodeholt, who apparently didn't retire. And a left end, Jay Howard. At right end, a rookie called Othniel Leach, and he's a 78-rated player. Right outside linebacker, they've got a second-year player called Shaman Buttrim, 81 overall. Cornerback, Joe Hayden. Juan Williams, and then a second year player called Demarius Shields. Then Jarius Bird at free safety, and the only position that isn't drastically improved is strong safety, where their players are 75 overall. This Browns team looks very good. I mean, no kidding, these Browns aren't the Browns, so this isn't a given. We do get to play them at home, but it's gonna still be embarrassing if I lose to them, even though they do have a lot of good players all over the place now. So it's the Browns, but not the Browns as we know them. First and 10, the first play of the game, under pressure, throws it into double coverage, but it's caught by Corey Coleman for 23 yards. Now that is not what we're used to seeing. Third and eight now, Bowen drops back, has a short completion to Riddick, but it's not good enough, so he turns the ball over. Third and two, Cowan was looking for a first down, couldn't find anything, just saw white and orange shirts. Second and eight, Bowen, quick pass out there, but it's short. Still, they're good at these quick little completions. Third and two, again on a play action, picks up Stucky on the blitz, and they get the first down there. Nice completion by the Browns. First and ten, Bowen throw out on a corner to his receiver. The first guy couldn't get him. Stanley doesn't get there either, and he completes for a touchdown. The Browns score the first touchdown of the day. So we have the ball and we're trying to get back to the ground game. It worked against the Packers, but we don't pick up much there. Just a couple of yards. Second and seven now for Tammy and a nice completion out to Mitchell for the first down. So Tammy moving the ball pretty well. First and ten. Time to look around. Throws one up and it's picked off by Joe Hayden. The ball didn't go exactly where it was meant to. Who knows if it could have gone where it was meant to, but it's an interception nevertheless. And now a completion over the 50-yard line for the Browns. And they're moving the ball on us again. First and 10 on the 47. Bowen goes for the option, but D. Milliner is having none of it. Tackles in for a four-yard loss. Third and 16 now. Bowen back to pass. Looking around. Sees nothing. Rolls out to the left. Decides to run for it. Four Saints defenders are there to make him slide, so he doesn't pick up the first down. They have to punt it away, and on first and ten, Tammy's pass is tipped. So now we have third and four. Tammy, play action, rolls out to the left, throws the ball into a double coverage, is tipped, picked off, and an interception. That's not who it's supposed to go to. That was a complete misfire. Don't blame Tammy for that one. There was a wide open player. It was a press of the wrong button. And they pick up a first down there. First and goal, and he's sacked. At least our defense is still playing well there. Christian Stuckey in on that one. Stuckey do actually in action for that one. Arms out, chasing the quarterback, and he gets it. Third and goal on the 10. He's looking around. He's got time to find someone. He throws it short. Defenders are there to stop him on the four, and they have to go for a field goal. So defense holds strong. Tammy now needing to make up for two drives in a row with an interception, and he does it with a nice completion to Chance Sugars. First and 10 again on the 40. Throws one up for Malcolm Mitchell. He makes the catch. He gets knocked out of his hands, but it wasn't bad. Second and 10 now. Throws it out on the corner to Coleman, who takes it. There's no safety there. They seem to be playing one high safety exclusively, and Coleman just walks into the end zone easily he had a long time to decide what to do on a 60 yard touchdown he just makes that cut on the corner one guy on him he easily beat him had him beat for speed and it's a touchdown so second and one 30 seconds left they go for a screenplay to Riddick Ekpro Lumu plays it perfectly gets outside of the lineman stops him cutting outside and now it's the second half third and 13 for Tammy can he find somebody open and he does and it's a nicely placed pass to Thomas Thomas holds on to it and it's a first down second and 10 now for Tammy throws it out to Tashe Sharp who makes the catch and only just is tackled an inch away from it second and ten same play again and this time he manages to make the guy miss and there's nobody there again the Browns for some reason playing exclusively with no high safety coverage once you beat the first guy we can pretty much just go in for a touchdown Bowen again moving the ball well there on third and three getting a first down first and ten it's a run and Stucky is there to put a stop to that pretty quickly 
Third and five, Bowen making adjustments. We're on an all-out blitz. It was a screen that could have gone terribly, but Stanley read it well. Stucky was there as well, and we stopped that dead in its track. So we show them how to really play a screen here. DJ Foster picks up the first down, runs behind his blocks well. And on first and ten, again, Tammy dropping back. Another pass out to TJ Sharp. Again, no safety there. We can keep taking advantage of this all day long. It's just too easy. TJ Sharp for another long touchdown in again. It was Kirksey, the middle linebacker, in coverage on Tajay Sharp. That's just never going to work, and especially if you don't have a safety in that third of the field, there's nobody there to stop him. They have to try and catch him, and they can't, and he's in for the touchdown. 21 to 10 right now. They go for another screen here. They didn't like our little jab at them, and this time it's a lot more successful. Stanley just manages to beat the lineman there. Two Riddick, push him out of bounds third and four and a completion to Coleman again. Coleman is a third down conversion machine. Second and 11. Pass there could have been intercepted. Kevin Pierre-Lewis didn't make the catch. That would have been a game changer but they had to settle for a field goal. Second and 15 out to Sugars. First guy misses him. Rolls off the second guy. Keeps going upfield. Tries to stiff arm. The next defender is pushed out of bounds but what a play from Chance Sugars. Third and three. Tammy tries to throw it out quickly and it's tipped down at the line. Knocked down at the line rather. First and 10 for Bowen. Plenty of time to look around. Throws one up deep. Stanley tips it. Ekpre Olumu almost intercepted it. His toes were out of bounds. Third and nine now for the Browns. Bowen looking around again. He completes but just short. That's fourth and inches. So on fourth and inches, they have to punt it away to our danger man, Marquise Goodwin. We know what he's capable of. Can he do anything here? Cuts to the left. Only has a big man to avoid. He does that easily. Two guys left. Can he thread the needle here? Almost almost threaded the needle between those two players if he'd beaten them he would have been through for a touchdown for sure first and 10 Tammy has to roll out a sack no he's not shakes the guy off throws it away Morland was actually open down the field but he was more worried about just getting rid of the ball at that point so first and 10 we get the first down anyway throws one up for Coleman who just goes up and beats the corner I think the cornerback lost the ball in the sun despite us playing in a dome didn't even make an attempt, and Coleman takes another ball into the end zone. So the Browns not giving up easy with Bowen under center. Jameson Nixon finally rides that guy out of bounds at the 17-yard line. First and 10 again. Bowen looking around, throws left. He's almost completed there at the 2-yard line, but Darren Stanley there to make sure it's incompleted. Fourth and six. They're going for it. Bowen into the end zone, knocked down by Ekpro Lumu, almost intercepted by Milliner. You would have liked to see an interception there, but on fourth and six, it doesn't really matter. Second and 11 now, just trying to run the clock out. And it's a nice bubble screen there to Malcolm Mitchell. He does get knocked out of bounds, but I think the first down was a little bit more important there. And this final run ends the game 28 to 13. So we started out a little bit rocky, but I think we managed to come back pretty convincingly. But that Browns team is very good, especially on offense, led by this Simon Bowen, 110 rating, 78% completions, 254 yards and a touchdown. However, we weren't bad either. 355 yards from Logan Tammy, 65% completion, four touchdowns, and one interception. He did not throw that second interception. That was a press of the wrong button, going to the wrong receiver. It should have never gone there. Then it was tipped. Then it was intercepted. That really wasn't his fault. The first one did not go exactly where I wanted it to, but to be honest, was it able to go exactly where I wanted it to? I don't know. So, absolutely zero running game today. They really shut that down. 0.7 yards per carry for Keith Marshall, but it didn't matter because we were good in the air. Receiving Tajay Sharp. I don't know what it is between Tajay Sharp and Logan Tammy because obviously he's on the field just as much with other quarterbacks, should technically get just as open, but three receptions, 131 yards, two touchdowns. Brandon Coleman, three receptions, two touchdowns for 97 yards. Sugar's over 50 again. Everyone having a good day there today. The defensive backs today leading in tackles and no surprise because they passed it around like nobody's business, although they did run quite a lot as well. Well, only sack today for Christian Stuckey. Stuckey do back in action actually with that sack. I know that player has regressed. I don't know what this is about again. I always look at these. It's kind of irrelevant because they're crazy. That's DJ Foster's injury again. But that does it for this week. We go 10 and 2. Didn't lose any games this week. Although we did throw two interceptions in that final game. Just scout these college players and then we are done for the week completely. And that does it for this episode. We're in week 14. Only four more games until the playoffs. And if we do happen to make it to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl episode will actually go out the Friday before the actual Super Bowl, which really is great timing in that sense. But like I said, we're done for this episode. I've got a whole bunch of experience to use for a bunch of players. Haven't done it in a while, so there's some upgrading to do, but that will all be done for the next episode where the 10-2 Saints play the 2-10 Buccaneers. <laughs>